I hope you didn't miss my face too much, but I finally got around to record a new video for you. In my previous videos, I showed you several grooming techniques and today we'll be focusing on a simple hair tuft. We will be doing the guide grooms and the hair generation. And after that, we will be using Random Man's new and amazing Llama Shading Networks to create some very hyper-realistic CG hair. If you like my videos and the content I create, I would highly appreciate it if you would support me by subscribing to my channel and also making sure that notification bell is on to always uh, get the latest videos once I upload them. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, all the scene files and also the scene files which created the thumbnails for this video will be uploaded to my Patreon account, so make sure to check that out. The link for my Patreon is in the description below. Alright, so here we are back in Houdini. I want to first start off with a little geo, which will be our representation of the head. Within, I'm just creating a sphere. This is just needed to actually generate some curves from there. So I'm just using a polygon here, adding some frequency to it, scaling it down, and uh, maybe 0.05 or so, and then move it up a little bit. So this will just be our starting point uh, where we grow the curves on. What I always tend to do, um, I'm creating a few um, nulls. For just for um, clarity's sake, so this will be my main out geo, and then on the side I put an out VDB, which will be needed for um, collision objects for the hair. It's mainly used for for guide grooming, so it's not super necessary for simple things. But as soon as you um, do something more advanced, like animation or like simming, simming some curves, um, VDBs are definitely needed for collision objects. Make sure you have a good representation of the VDB like that. And then this is pretty much good to go. Last thing what I want to do, um, I just want to paint um, an attribute on the geo so I can just define where I want to grow hair. So on this attribute mask, I'm heading over to attributes right here, calling it density. And you can see it's already blue. And all I need to do now is hit enter, um, um, reduce the size of my paintbrush here. And wherever I paint now, whatever is red, this is where we will be growing some hair. And if I go out, you won't see that, but essentially now we have stored an attribute on the geo. Next, what I like to do, I'm not a big fan of the shelf tools in general, so I keep trying to um, set up my own things. I want to do a guide groom, which is essentially what the shelf is doing as well. I like to rename this to, um, to guide. And in here, I want to pick my, um, my skin. So I'm going into my drop down here. I'm going into my object level, geo head and out. This is my skin. You can see now we already get some curves created. And also on the VDB side, I also um, select my custom VDB. I have, I just have more control. You can generate it within, but I just want to have it here for more control sake. I want to define where I want to grow the curves. I don't want to have Houdini generate random uh, seeds on them. So I'm just disabling it all together. And all we need to do now is dive in here and create some guide curves. Typically what I use for grooming in Houdini is called Groom Bear. It's a third party um, plugin, uh, but you can totally also use the default ones, which just ship with Houdini. This has just a little bit more flexibility in terms of um, guiding the, the curves and stuff. It's just, I would say it's resembling how XGen works in a sense. All right, so if I now, let's see, if I visualize everything above, you can see we have our sphere. I'm changing my radial menu to be um, Groom Bear, which is um, some tools for the plugin. I can then navigate to draw. Make sure you select the Groom Bear node while doing this. Um, draw. And then typically I can just draw some kind of curve and I can shape it, like modify its um, origins. You can change the fall offs on the curve. Let's see where fall offs are. And then we already have a very basic curve. So now you want to see, okay, this is just now the guide curve. We need to generate some hair on it. So all you got to do, hair generate, quite straightforward. And this one now, um, I always rename this. This will be my groom. In here, it, it, it asks for the groom object. So all you got to do is drag it into the slot here. You will see hair will be generated. This again asks for a collision object, so you can just do the same thing. You can either copy it from the geo, or you can just quickly navigate to the out VDB, accept that, and now we have the collision object. Right now we don't have a shader, so I'm just hopping into the material context by holding N, going to material, creating a hair um, shader. This is Mantras or Houdini's default hair shader, which is good enough. Alt left keyboard jumps me back to my previous location. 
and in the material slot right here i'm just picking up the material context and you should see now we have some color some brown color on the hair itself um, you can increase your hair density you can also see we get more hair now and i can change how how much it scatters right now this is not um, respecting my painted area like where we painted the density so we have to go to um to density here there's a no override make sure as you set that to skin this will default to density and you can already see now we only have hair where i painted what i like to do go to thickness as well and pick skin attribute and make sure the thickness is also driven by my density what that means is on the borders um where it fades out to a different value they, the hair will get thinner if, if i blur them out you will see that we get thinner hair on the outside this is actually typically true um as well whenever you get the, to the to the edge of your your hairline you will see you get thinner hairs and i'm just um, essentially representing this using um, the density it's just a multiplier um let's see what else we need we do have our thickness so hair is uh, pretty thin it's this is a little bit too thick for human hair so if you add a zero and a five this is more representative of an average human hair um, in nanometers this is now i believe in millimeters and you can already see now we don't have enough hair like it's very sparse so typically then i'm just increasing the density you will see we get more hair it's nice and thin now and this is definitely already workable we will definitely adjust this as we go along what i also like to do is change the blending mode um, to be extruded which just means it will has it will retain its volume a little bit nicer it will not collapse on each on itself and from here on this is now all about grooming i uh, sorry it's all about yeah setting up the guide curves making sure you get some nice uh, edge flow or curve flow and then we will be doing a lot of work within the hair generate to make them actually look realistic so why don't we first uh, go back to the guide head here what you can do you can keep the hair active but you can go to optimization prune it and this will only retain 10 percent of the final hair which helps to just shape this a little bit easier right so what i'm doing now i'm dump, diving back into our guiding section here and if i hit now see i can now move my my guide curves and you will see the hair is uh, respecting that and i can essentially groom in real time add some nice loops in here make this uh, workable and then maybe follow a reference it's probably more recommended so i will be doing now some guide grooming and then uh, we'll see what we get All right, so now let me adjust the density. I, I'm a bit to the side here, as you can see, we're just uh, growing too much hair at the bottom. I think I need to adjust the paint a little. So I, I can just go in here and paint where I added the guides. It's quite easy, you just go in here, add more paint. You can also um, inverse it by control clicking and painting. This will remove your color or your attributes from it. Then you can shift, hold to blur things out a little. As you can see, we are generating the curves. And what I noticed as well, our influence radius might be a little bit too large, so we're not really guiding. It's more like blending between the guides. And if you reduce the influence radius, you have more control on where the, the, the hair is being grown. But actually, I do want to have a lot of hair because we will be driving it a lot more using, um, using the clumping systems and stuff like that. All right, so let me remove the prune. You will see we get actually a lot more hair now like this so now if we dive into the hair generate this is where we do lots of different things to the hair to make it more believable because right now we are just we just created this clump of really groomed hair so within here we have lots of control to control the clumping the overall look of the individual hair fibers so what I first want to do, I want to generate a little bit more guide curves within this, which are then being driven by the clumping system. So in here, you can create another hair generate. And again, this is just the workflow I came up with. It's nothing specific, or maybe there are way better ways to do it. This is just um, 
doing the the grooming side of things um, how I figured out it works best for me um, I don't want to grow hair everywhere I just want to um, grow it around the guides so before um, this let's see if I can actually do this credit null this is the, the the three guide curves I drew per hand and then you can generate more around those which follow and interpolate between those so you can obviously reduce them to be um, a very small amount and you can remove the relax iterations so they are just randomly spaced remove this um, the influence radius and you will see they will follow my initial guides a lot closer now so this is quite nice if you want to add a little bit more fidelity to your grooms and you can space um, the, the new guides with the influence radius a little bit I think this is a little bit too much for now but we will be tweaking this as we go along and you can probably have one um, relaxed iterations just to have them not too close to each other something like this could work so this is now my additional um, guide curve so you can rename this to say additional and what I want to do I want to use those to drive my millions or hundred thousands of hairs so I'm using another clump a plump and this time I'm grabbing my my hair from the hair system which is all the hundred thousand hairs we have I'm, and I'm hooking it up properly so skin to skin um, VDB to VDB and then the last input here is called custom clump curves and I want to um, connect my custom clump curves to this right now you will see this is what we get and you can essentially control this now using the clump size and this already looks cool but it's not really directed based on our initial guides and this is typically something you want to do um, so I'm just using this to drive it and you will see now they follow actually um, these guide curves which follow my three which we painted before which is super nice because now we have all the control we need for this and if you find these are too thin like as you see in my um, two reference images they are probably a little bit too sparse like sorry not um, too too clumped you can change the amount of additional guides here and you will see if I just add a handful you get this which is essentially our original guides and then you can add more and more and more to really break up the look and we will kind of be doing this um, as we go along so let's just for now maybe add 3000 and this number is arbitrary to um, to your scenes right this is just um, for my scene scale or whatever and the hair clump you can also play around how strong they are actually clumping which is quite typical and um, control this um, via root to tip and what we then want to do is we want to add more details more frequency and just these fly off um, individual smaller clumps and right now we just have these big chunks which look a little bit awkward so what I like to do then is we need to break it up more I think also the top here is a little bit too um, loose so I'm just I'm clumping them a little bit together and uh, you can also change the seed um, so you get a different kind of scatter result until you you find something you like more maybe this is a little bit different you can change the influence radius I think this works a little bit nicer and what I want to do now as I said I want to really break it up a little bit more so what I always like to do go create a um, guide mask I always hit GM hook it up and I want to rename this to frizz mask because this is essentially driving my output mask name and if I go in here I can change to use noise mask and this way I can control individual strands and I can play around with, with the gain and the, the bias to just um, isolate a few of those strands like so and what I want to do then I want to frizz those up so frizz is just a noise along the curve if I use this now you'll see everything is essentially um, noised up like there's a little minor noise to it uh, but I want to just drive it based on this mask so I'm going into the masking blend picking the guide attribute and then in here I should have my frizz mask which we just created and now the frizz is only applied to um, a few hairs in here and within the frizz operation you can change obviously the amplitude you can change the frequency I just want to have it a very low frequency so I'm just pushing them outside a little bit something like this and you can apply random frequency so it's it's always good to randomize things 
And I also probably want to increase my bias a little so we get a little bit more hair being pushed around. And once I did that, I'm doing another clamp after this. This will give me individual smaller um, hair clumps or hair strains. Hair tufts is probably the best word. We'll see now if I do it really small, we get these nicely individual shapes of this. And bef before this, we had these combined, and now we have these kind of more individual ones, which I think uh, makes it a lot more realistic because you get these smaller clamps, and you will see this um, in, in, in the references as well. Like, they're all broken up a little here. Like, you've got always smaller ones, especially here in the tips, you get like five or six different ones. And this is roughly resembling what I just did in, in the viewport. Um, it probably is a bit too full over the place, but these the references on the left are just here for me to to just get closer to reality, right? It does not need to be a one to one match because this is not the intention of this video. And you can also add a be, before we go into all the frizzing up. What I like to do, let's just call this um, guide clump, and then I create another hair clump like that. And this one here will then be a secondary clump or so which just breaks up our initial um, tufts a little bit more. So you can reduce the size of this. You will see now, instead of having these three bigger ones, if I reduce this, we get a little bit more broken up ones. It's similar to what we did before. Uh, it's just um, a little bit more constrained to the original guides. You can use crossover to, um, to break these clumps up a little bit so they're not super tight. And then you apply the same frizz mask, you do this breakup thing, and then you get these individual, um, it's maybe not superly groomed as you would expect if you come from the hairdresser, but you get the idea that you have these nice individual curves. What I want to do next is create one more masking, and this will be fly away mask. So I'm creating another GM guide mask, hooking that up, and I call this just fly away. And this one, instead of using this noise, which we did before, we were using random, and this just um, picks me a percentile of the hair. So one is 100%, and then obviously you've got 10% or whatever. And I want to use this one to create these um, <clears throat> flyaway hairs on the side, left and right of the main tufts. I'm using frizz again to drive that, and I'm just targeting again just my um, flyaway mask using guide attributes, flyaway. And now you will see that we we get this nice um, effect of just hairs going um, all over the sides here. And the cool thing is you can also shorten them based on the same mass. So what I like to do as well as using um, the length, set length here, drop that in, and set this to multiply and randomize, and just pick our fly away hairs from the guide mask. So now we will be only shortening the fly away hairs. Right now we are not doing anything to them, but now you will see that I'm actually shortening them, shortening them or lengthening them. You always want to go shorter because um, Houdini doesn't know what you want to do with the hair, so it just extends them, which is weird. But if you shorten them, you always get the desired result. And then again, you can um, amp up the frequency maybe. Let's see how many guides. Oh, we actually need to connect this. Connect it to our main output here. Go up a level what we get. So this is roughly now, I think it's we, we don't have enough hair yet. It's a little bit sparse, so we have now apparently 200,000, but in the end, um, we have now just 3,300 hair strands, which is not enough. I think, um, well, probably for a tuft, it's fine. Um, for our purposes, I think we do one more. Um, we actually do just have 1,300. So uh, let's just uh, crank it up a little. Let's add, uh, multiply this by 10 or so. Now we get a lot more. 6,000, so essentially double. And you will see that we it got a little bit um, thicker, so we need to readjust this a little bit. Just because it's based on um, physical hair thicknesses, you will need to adjust a few parameters. You can change it here, like the hair width scale is just to multiply how thick the hair actually is. Secondary clump is our finer clump systems here afterwards, which we can also uh, reduce a little bit more just to break these shapes up. Reduce the hair width scale. And then the frizz mask, this should, uh, it's probably a little bit too um, sparse now, so we can uh, push this going into additional and adjusting our bias to just target a little bit more. Then everything is again frizzed up, then we clump again, and now we get, you can see we get these nicer individual strands, which is really nice. 
and we do the fly away masking, this is still on 10%, which I think is now probably too much. So we reduce, oh, it's actually 20%. So we reduce this to 10% or so, 5%. This looks probably a little bit nicer, like that. All right, so this is now our initial starting out point for our guides, uh, for our hair system. And you always have the flexibility to still control it after the fact, right? So that's pretty nice. Right, so we're using Random Man this time, which is the first um, of me using Random Man. So I will be just uh, going over the shelves quick. I'm just creating a dome light, control clicking it will create me that dome light. I do have a preset for my studio light, which will just uh, plug in an HDI source in here. And next up, I want to create a render camera. We just need to find a good angle. I think um, my initial idea was this angle kind of like this more it really doesn't matter we can adjust the guides later so i'm just um it random man needs to have a camera so i'm just um angling something up here going to lights and cameras control click camera which will then always fill it up like that but then we do have a um thrust in here and we can aim where you want to render i'm just moving it to the side now i'm changing the resolution to be um one uh 2k like that you create the rub which is essentially the render engine you need to go to your out context here to see the render rub this is our render settings it creates your path trace automatically and i want to just increase my maximum samples to one to eight just for a little bit smoother result um obj um, on your groom geo make sure you, um in the render section you change the hair generation to use sub geometry And I think that is all we have to do. We do have light, we have a camera, we have render settings. So let me just um, hit up IPR render. This should open up it, which is Render Man's uh, render preview. Yeah, and this is what we have. You will see that we don't have a shader. We Our curves are a little bit edgy or jagged, which is obviously, um, which will cause us a lot of problems. So let's just assign a shader first. Selecting the geo head, which is our um, initial sphere. I'm just hitting the shelf button, pixel surface, which will um, create a shader and assign it automatically. You will see it's connected here. And I'll do the same for the groom head, pixel surface. You will see it will assign that as well. So now um, let's actually split our views up and um, lock the bottom one to our OBJ. And we jump in the top one to our material context, lock that as well. And so the pixel surface one here is our base. This is just our base uh, material, defaults to 0.8 neutral gray. The second one will be our hair shader. And if I dive into this right now, it's a pixel surface material. Um, but if I render now, you will see that we get a different material on it. All right, so all I had to do now was to go into the um, skin settings and disable the displays uh, curves, and then it was rendering just fine. So I still have the material connected here, which is a pixel surface shader, and we do have our um, regular base material on the sphere itself. So uh, right now we don't have any um, hair shaders applied just yet, but we still want to figure out first um, our jagged edges here. Like we want to have more subdivisions on um, the hairs itself. Um, so what I want to do, I want to, so what I want to do, I want to jump into the guides itself. Um, if I visualize those, you will see that we do have a certain amount of points um, assigned to them, which are representative of the um, smoothness. And if I visualize them, you can see we have this much points on it. And I just want to make it really nice and smooth. So I'm just creating 60 segments um, per strand. You will see we get way more subdivisions. And in turn, this will also um, have an effect on the frizz. So just be aware of that. So if I bring that back in, we should definitely see more detail on our curves itself. We'll see that the frizz is now way more um, exaggerated and we probably need to adjust that as well. So let's just go over our grooming itself. So we are coming in with our guide clumps, then we break it up, we are creating the frizz mask. And then we're frizzing it up. So this here is probably already too much in terms of frequency. So we just need to make sure we don't exaggerate it too much. Maybe something like that. Then we're clumping it again. 
getting the nice breakup, creating the fly away mask, frizzing those up, they are also probably too much. Maybe like that, setting the length, and now this is um, not going all over the place. And again, we will also be adjusting this as we see fit later on. And now you will see once you render again, you get nice um, smooth curves here all over the place. And this is exactly what I wanted to achieve. The only thing now is we have our sphere here, which um, is not really subdivided, but we don't really care too much about it. So what I want to do, I'm just viewing through the camera here, and then I'll just move this up, zoom in a little bit so we don't see the sphere too much. And before we jump into the, into the shading, I also want to rotate my light a little bit so we see um, more light coming from the screen right. So I'm just rotating this so we get a little bit more interesting lighting on it. Maybe something more side lit and remove the guides. And now I think it's, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit front faced, um, but this should not matter. So I think what we should be doing now is... Um, jump into the hair shading and this is quite straightforward to be quite frank with you um, using the llama shading networks so in the pixel material um, i'm just diving in here right now it's a pixel surface shader so i'm just deleting that and then i'm just creating a llama surface um, material shader here uh, plugging that in and then the llama surface will get its um, llama chung hair shader hair chinks shader um, in the material front and this is essentially how a pixel or Arnold surface shader would be it expects a material and this goes in here and then this is essentially the defining how the shader will look you have certain parameters on the surface like um, subsurface scattering toggles on and off interior on and off opacity on and on stuff like that but mainly this is uh, this is driving the shader what I always like to do, um, instead of using the colors in here to get exactly what you want, um, I'm using the Pixar hair color node. And this is very similar to what Arnold has on their palette too, is like a melanin pigmentation material. So for the Llama hair chunk shader, you only need to connect the resulting TT to the color TT. That's all you have to do. And you don't need to worry about anything else. So in here you have melanin, redness, randomization, root to, root to tip colorizations, all the fun stuff. So if I render this now, you should see that we have some kind of color on it. Um, so what is missing is the melanin randomization. So I can visualize the cool thing in, in, in Houdini Render Man, you can actually hit the debug little bug icon here and it will symbolize an Arnold isolate select your material. And you, right now you will see this is what is driving the shader, this color. And the randomization is not working by default. So what you have to do, go to the random setup here and hair ID Primva, type an ID. This will then enable or tell the shader to use the ID attribute on the hair guy on the hairs itself to drive this randomization. The default for this material is um, it has a stray hair density, which is like these um, the white uh, mutant hairs. Typically, I'm just disabling that because I don't want to have too much uh, white hairs in this. The hair color itself. So the more you go to the right the darker the hair will get and the more to the left the blonde or white the hair will get so if i show that in the shader itself this is now pretty much white hair and then you can go to the right you get all shades of pigmentation here if i go back to the debug i want to have this randomization you will see that this will create essentially a random color per strand this is what i want and this will give give the hair a more realistic result you don't want to exaggerate it too much though like the default 0.05 um, actually it's 0.005. Anyway, 0.5 is pretty good on default. Sometimes I just go up a little bit more 7.5 to exaggerate that a little bit more. What you can also do, it has a root to tip colorization. The unfortunate thing is this will actually change the pigmentation, which I believe is not accurate. I think the hair pigmentation along the strand is always the same. It's just how you dye your hair. This is why you get these blonder tufts or when the sun hits them, it will get different. So if I visualize this, you will now see that we get a slightly different color at the top so i'm not a big fan of that so i will be doing some custom things and this is now why we go into um shading and doing look dev on the hair up till now this is the default simple shading you can use the controllers to get the look you want 
can change the um, re reduce the redness of it get more brown hair or whatever and this will get you already quite far in terms of realistic hair shading uh, but I, what I wanted to show you now is a more detailed approach how you can really push um, the detail and the, the quality of your hair so now let's talk about how we want to achieve that the main thing is we need to go into our groom and export a few parameters. <clears throat> the first thing what I want to show you, if you create a color node in the hair guides and you hook up your hair clump system to this color. And let me just hide our, or just move the it window down. And if you go to the settings of the color node and change random from attribute and the attribute I want to get the color from is this clump ID, which is created in each hair clump node. Passing that in here, making sure this is on primitives, you will see now we get a, a map, an ID per clump. And this clump is driven by our initial guides. If I use this one here, we get a more detailed, a more a finer structure because we added this secondary bumps as well. What I wanna do, I wanna use this one as my main driving factor and then I also want to use the one at the bottom which creates our individual high frequency clumps so I want to use both of these to drive the shader so the secondary bump uh, clump I don't care about its IDs so I'm just disabling those and it will fall back to the top ones here so it will use this one for the bottom ones I want to rename them instead of clump ID I'm just calling this clump ID small and then obviously I would need to change it in here too so I can actually visualize it and now we have these two different kind of clumps you will see that how they are affected by our um, system here this is our clump small and then if I duplicate this and hook up our main clumps. Make sure you rename this. Oh, sorry, I messed up a little. So this is clump ID at the top, and this one at the bottom is clump ID small. Like that. So if I visualize the top one, we get this. If I visualize the bottom one, um, we should be getting the correct one. Sometimes it's a bit finicky. Um, it's mainly just sliding the value and you get uh, get it back. So now we have these two um, attributes stored on our hair. The only thing what we still need is some kind of um, root to tip kind of way to control it. So what I always like to do at the bottom here, I'm creating a resample node. And what it does on default, it will add more segments to each of those curves. I don't want that. So I'm just disabling that feature. So right now, this is like a ghost node. It's not doing anything. If I hook it up, nothing will happen. All I want to do, I want to export this curve view attribute what it's doing it's creating a zero to one ram from root to tip and i can use that within the shader to create some uh, um, nice breakups last but not least each hair has not the same thickness so again i want to create a, a little bit of um a little bit of a control which is driven from our origin original width parameter right now this is um quite low we can see if we check our groom head we are at a, th at a thickness of 005 what i want to do though i want to create a few which are thinner than that and to do so it, it's re it requires a little bit of back and forth because um the original value is applied to the points we'll see all the points will essentially inherit the same value um, but we want to multiply that existing value to something else so let me first disable the thickness based on density for now so now we have a uniform width you will see it's a 004 probably make this a little bit more accurate 005 for all the hairs and within this now i want to do something right so i want to promote the points to a primitive and this will make sense in a little bit. So promotion means you just change kind of its type from point um, width to a primitive. So now it will disappear from our, our points. We'll go onto the curves itself. You will see now we have a width somewhere in here at the back here. So if I, if I just hide all the other ones, show the width only, 
you'll see now each primitive has has this width parameter. And what I want to do next is what I want to adjust that using um, adjust float. Dive in here. And now I'm able to do some randomization to each of those primitives. Make sure you select um, the width as well. And I'll go to multiply. Uh, sorry, I'll go to random. And I want to multiply that. We'll now see that we are multiplying each primitive with a random value from 0 and 1. I don't want to make them infinitely thin. I want to just reduce the thickness by half. So some are 0 0.3 essentially and, one are one, and a few ones are 0 0.5. And this is a random mask. And what we need to do now is random man needs to have it on the points. So I'm just promoting it back to where it came from. So I'm doing another attribute promote. And going from this time, not from points to primitives, but from primitives to points. And now you see it disappeared from the primitive section, going back to points. Um, now this is a random value between point 2 and point 5 on each curve, essentially. So that was a handful, but now we should have everything we need to actually do some more shading. All right, so now we do have those attributes on our hair, but the thing is that this hair generate node, this wrapper, is actually not passing these attributes to the shader. So within the attributes section here, you would need to add our clump. So we want to add clump ID to it. We want to add clump ID small to it. And we also want to add the curve view. So now we have our three new attributes which we created on the inside are now on top level, so now the shader can actually read those. What I like to do, how I like to control this pixel hair color is using vary nodes. It's similar to Arnold's Jitter color. So pixel vary will just give you the option to drive the hair based on an ID. So if I hook up the TRT as my input and go back to my color TT and I render, you will see there is no change. If I visualize just the map, nothing is happening. I want to change this very source to prim var and change the variable name to dollar $OS, which is then reading the name of the node. And I want to just rename the node to clump ID. And you will see nothing really is changing. We are just, we just have now more control. If I change the luminance now, you will see the luminance is only changing based on our clump IDs, which we generated in the hair itself. And this is now a nice way to control per clump, the color we want to adjust. So I can easily go to luminance, make them a little bit darker, maybe change the hue very little. Let's change the, the hue mode to um, additive. So we're going into more like a blonde in a few areas. You can also visualize it obviously like this. You'll see now we have a little bit browner, a little bit blonder hair tuff, which is nice. Because in the hairdresser, you will probably go and ask, hey, can I get some highlights in there? So you will get this variation. Same with luminance, you can push that a little bit so one is a little bit darker than the others. And this is now, as I said before, for our initial um, large clumps. What I like to do then, I just alt drag on a node to duplicate it and rename this clump ID to underscore small and I rewire it from clump ID to TT. And now we have a different kind of control in here. If I visualize this one, you will now see, because we just copied it, we still have the values left. But if I now change the luminance, this is now actually changing our smaller tufts, which we created afterwards. So now we have even more finer control and we can um, create the look we want. Sometimes you want to have the clump by the being controlled first or after, but it's not really that necessary. I just want to show you the flexibility you have with this kind of system. And now it's just about fine tuning all the parameters. And the cool thing is you have still the main flexibility of your original melanin and it, it's essentially just multiplying um, the other values. And the last thing what I want to show is how you, we can apply the curve U attribute, how we can actually control that in a, in a nice fashion. So I'm using the primvar reader, which is like an Arnold the user data. It just brings in a primvar and we just want to call it curve U. And we also want to be able to control this using a pixel remap, similar like AI uh, range. And if I plug that in using a pixel color correct in here in between 
TLT goes in here, result goes to the input, and then it has this masking option, similar again as an Arnold, you can have this mask, and I want to um, plug in the result R into the mask input, and now we have this primvar connected, so let's visualize that. This is our primvar. I can remap this, so if I want to have more flexibility, more control, I can change the input ranges. You will see now um, just the top is being affected. We always want to invert this, so whatever is white will be controlled by the color correct. So make sure to just reverse those two values. Now the top will be affected. You can still change um, the values, obviously, how you want, how strongly you want to have it affect. And then if I visualize the color correct node itself, you will see that you can now uh, go to the color tab, you can reduce the intensity, so it just gets dark, it does not change the hue, this is what the um, other one did, it was changing the hue. This is just that uh, you can essentially desaturate the roots, make them darker by half, so now you have a lot darker roots, if I visualize the result, um, let's see, remove this one, you will now get darker roots than you have in the tips, and you can change, as I said, the fall off using the ramp, you just want the roots, um, you would need to adjust this even further, go back all the way, so only now this area here is affected by the color correct, and you will see there's a color shift in there. So now I will just be spending a little bit more time just to fine-tuning the stuff, playing around with the values, and that's pretty much um, the details I want to push out. You can We can also adjust the groomer a little bit in a bit. So I'll be just going into the clump IDs section here and just controlling a few more things. All right, I did a few minor more adjustments to this, adjusting the width of the hair and also playing around with the shaders slightly, at least with the clump ID colors. And then I rendered a 4K render. This is very close up, so the hair thickness might be a, seem a little bit thick, but I think it's still quite accurate because we are very close to the hair tufts. At the top, at the base, you will see we are still um, a little bit... We're, we're lacking subdivisions. Typically in Runner Man, you can set the curves to be interpolated as Bezier or Catmull ROM. Unfortunately, there's still a big bug going on that it will um, not generate the curves of all the attributes we intended. So the only solution for now is just to really subdivide your curves, which is fine. I hope this was a helpful tutorial for you, and I hope you're looking forward for more Random Man and Houdini content. Please let me know below. Leave me a thumbs up if you like that. If you have any questions about any of these, please drop them in the comment section below. Alright, so I hope everyone is excited for more Random Man content. I will be trying to upload regularly again, and I hope to see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.